Bruce Johnson purchased the property Patrick's Day in 2005 with the intention of converting it to a dairy. Although originally a sheep and cattle grazing property, it was already well laid out with existing laneways and subdivided into a number of smaller paddocks suitable for rotational grazing and dairying. Bruce planned the conversion to dairying with the intention of milking 680 cows. The dairy is a 60 unit rotary serviced by a main yard capable of holding 700 head and ancillary yards for the handling and exiting of stock. From the outset, Bruce had an eventual expansion of cow numbers in mind. The main water sources for the farm are a bore and a 25 milliliter dam catching the surface runoff. This dam is used for providing stock water and is considered very reliable due to an annual rainfall of about 680 millimetres. The bore supplies most of the water used in the dairy. Although predominantly a dry land farm, Bruce holds a 60 megalitre irrigation allocation and also reuses effluent water from the dairy for irrigation. Bruce views the effluent as a valuable resource that can provide water for reuse as yard wash as well as nutrients and water for the irrigation of summer crops. He has previously owned dairy farms where he has used effluent from the dairy for irrigation. We came from another property that had a two pond effluent system the same as we've put here but it had a tractor powering a big pump lay flat hose and a cannon and we wanted to improve on that system. It was not getting water spread evenly over the property, over the areas we, uh, we irrigated and it was labour intensive. That was, the, that was the downfalls of it. Bruce sought advice from John Kane of Fonterra for planning the new dairy and effluent system. John, who formerly designed effluent systems for the Department of Primary Industries, was able to explain to Bruce the various options and considerations regarding effluent systems and help him through the requirements of the EPA and local council. John arranged for Bruce to visit some other farms in the area to look at their effluent systems. He heard about the advantages of having a two-pond system over a single pond and of the various types of irrigation systems. This then helped him decide on a suitable system. Here yeah, we looked at three different systems. Uh, they were all travellers. There were not many of these centre pivots in, but the feedback from what we were told, they were, they were working well. And they were just a smaller version of all the centre pivots around anyway. Less labour intensity was the main reason. Um, simplicity and uh, maintenance, those in, in that order. That was, the, that was the three things I was looking for, which I pretty much got here. Cost-wise, it was no more than the travellers, but once again, the travellers were, were um, labour-intensive and it looked like they might have more maintenance being higher-pressure systems. Being a greenfield site, the effluent system could be designed and located in conjunction with the new dairy and yards, rather than trying to fit it in with the location and levels of existing infrastructure. The new dairy is sited on a slight rise, providing natural fall for the yard and an opportunity to locate the effluent ponds lower down the slope, but away from the natural drainage line supplying water to the dam. As it was a new dairy, no actual water use figures were available. An estimate of 35,000 litres per day was made for purposes of designing the effluent system. Oh, we've got plenty of pond capacity. Then. Runoff from the roof is captured in rainwater tanks and used for washing the vat and providing hot water in the dairy. The hot water and detergents are recycled within the dairy. The plate cooler uses bore water, which is then discharged to the surface water dam to enable it to be reused for stock water. The bore also supplies the water for general cleaning, machine rinsing, teat sprays, the platform wash and general hosing down around the dairy. All water from within the dairy, except the plate cooler water, eventually finds its way into the effluent ponds. A flood wash system is used to clean the holding yard, drafting pens and exit race. The flood wash consists of two 5,000 gallon tanks, each fitted with a 450 millimetre drop chute. Either fresh water from the storage dam or recycled second pond effluent water can be used in the flood wash. Effluent runoff from the yards is collected in a large gravel trap. The trap removes large particles such as gravel or sticks and is constructed so it can be easily cleaned out with a front end loader. The gravel trap drains to the first storage pond. 
The first pond acts as a settling pond to remove suspended solids and particulates. It was initially designed to be about 7 megalitres, based upon a sludge accumulation rate of 1 megalitre per 100 cows. However, additional filling was required for the dairy shed and holding yard, and the pond was over-excavated. Its final size is 9 megalitres. The first pond was designed such that it would require cleaning approximately every 7 years. However, being larger than initially planned, this may now be every 10 years. Prior to construction, Bruce spoke with contractors to ensure that it can be cleaned out easily. It is shaped and sized in a way which allows cleaning by using a long-armed excavator or a chopper pump and sludge pump. A T-piece links the first pond to the second effluent pond. The second pond has a capacity of 15 megalitres and is sized to provide sufficient storage for seven months of effluent water. During winter and spring, the second pond water is recycled through the flood wash system. In summer and autumn, fresh water is used in the flood wash system, while the second pond water is used for irrigation. The decision to use either recycled water or fresh water for the flood wash is determined by the water level in the second pond, which has managed to allow adequate freeboard in August to allow it to fill again for the forthcoming summer. The site for both effluent ponds comprise deep clays which were ideal for lining and sealing the ponds to ensure that effluent does not leak into the groundwater. The top of the banks for the effluent ponds are above the natural surface level, so all surface runoff from the area surrounding the effluent ponds is diverted around the ponds to the surface storage dam. The batters of the ponds are sloped to allow easy access for mowing or spraying and are not prone to erosion. Water is pumped from the second pond to the mini centre pivot for irrigation. A key consideration in selecting the centre pivot was that it required significantly less labour for operation, had lower operating costs and better reliability compared to the travelling irrigators. The mini centre pivot covers 13 and a half hectares. The second effluent pond provides a total irrigation amount of 150 millimetres. This is applied to summer crops over a critical four-week period during January and February when the crops will benefit most from the added water and nutrients and the crop can be utilised to match the production requirements of the herd. In our system, once, since the pivot's been put in, we, we've really got to fine-tune that the crops probably should be put in the ground a bit earlier to utilise them more when we've got all the herd in, but basically we've got to fine-tune that system yet. It's meant we're probably getting 25% more growth out of crops, more, more dry matter, that's what it's meant. And, and at the same time we're uh, getting rid of the effluent, which, which you, uh, you have to do anyway. The irrigation system is designed to apply approximately 5 millimetres per day, with a flow rate of 15 litres per second. The clay loam topsoils hold approximately 15 millimetres plant available water. A key consideration in the design of centre pivots is that they have very high instantaneous application rates on the end nozzles, which can possibly result in runoff and erosion problems. A network of 150mm underground pipes services three different sites on the farm for the centre pivot. These areas are located on the risers where the soils are more suited to irrigation and away from any streamlines to reduce the chance of nutrients entering a waterway. Other considerations for selecting the sites for the centre pivot were the proximity to roads and neighbouring houses, the possible need to remove trees and the location of existing laneways and soil types. The centre pivot remains at each site for two years to allow for a two-year cropping rotation prior to its pasture renovation. It is then moved to the next site. Soil testing is undertaken at each site to monitor nutrient levels, avoid an excessive build-up of nutrients and maintain an Olsen phosphorus of around 25. By carefully planning and designing the system, Bruce has ensured he has a system that satisfies his needs. It is reliable, simple to operate with minimal labour and will benefit his business by efficiently using a valuable resource of nutrients and water. When, when you start a dairy or effluent system on a dairy farm, you tend not to look ahead. And, uh, we've done that twice in the past, so this time we've got it right in the way that we might increase herd numbers. So we're set up 
probably well into the future for that we're probably capable of 12 or 1500 cows of this system. So it's taken three goes but we've got it right this time.